Sorry. Hey, what's up? My name is Samuel Leeds, and in this video, I'm going to introduce you to a guy called Lawrence who got made redundant from Thomas Cook last year. He sold all his stocks, everything he had, and put it into property. He's now completely financially free. Became financially free from one deal alone that he bought from auction. He's going to share the exact story, A to Z, step by step, how he became financially free in property so that you can do the same too. Stay tuned. Lawrence, so good to have you in my home. Thank you. I needed to get you down here because you came on the crash course. When did you come on the crash course? I think it was June last year in uh, Excel, All London. Right. Talk to me. What happened? What have you done since? You've become financially um, independent. Yep. Incredibly remarkable story. So I, wa I want to know. Yeah. Tell me everything. God, so, I mean, it's been such a uh, roller coaster. So I've gone basically from zero to pretty much 14 properties. Um, Went on the crash course. Well, first of all, I lost, so I worked in sales recruitment for 10 years. Lost my job when Thomas Cook went under and I went home, went on YouTube and I was like, all right, financial freedom strategies, what do I do? Saw your um, financial freedom challenge. And I was like, this guy's just done in one week in like, I think it was Wolverhampton yeah. or wherever it was, um, what I've been trying to do for 10 years. So I was like, I need to go check this guy out, see what he's done. Uh, went on the course and I probably learned more in, I'd say three, hours at your course than I did at three years at uni and 30k of student debt um, and then I literally just took everything I learned and rather than I guess just keep learning I just threw myself into it um, uh, I'm trying to think where to start I went I went to Blackpool and um, because it was just property was so cheap and I originally went up there to try and do like a, a rent to rent strategy and then I saw a block of flats for sale for um, 170,000 pounds it was 10 flats and I just couldn't believe how cheap it was. And as soon as I saw it, I got my calculator out, got my spreadsheet, um, uh, you know, went through everything we learned on the course in terms of, you know, how to figure out what your cash flow, what your ROI is. And I was like, this is unbelievable. Like if I can make this work, it'll be making thousands and thousands of pounds every month. Um, how would it be making thousands so, and thousands? Because most people might think, okay, I block a 10 flats, you might rent out the average flat for in Blackpool, 350, 400 quid. How's that going to make thousands of pounds? But obviously what you did was creative. Yeah. So talk to me about what you did. So everything we did was all on service accommodation. Yeah. Um, so obviously you can charge 50, 60, 70, 80 pounds a night in some circumstances. Um, so all you need to do is have one room for 50 pounds a night for say 20 days and you've already made a thousand pounds off one little flat. Yeah. So I just thought, you know, if I can get 10 of these flats up and running at potentially 50 pounds a day um, and the location was perfect, um, I was... Yeah, I just went for it basically, and so just you kept. bought a block of flats in Blackpool, yeah. cheap as chips. Yeah, and how's it going? It's amazing. So last month, the revenue was six thousand pounds, and that's in the middle of a pandemic. Yeah, you know, we're going to partner with a lot of the local engineers and theatres down the line as well, make sure it's fully booked. But yeah, I mean, and that's also two of them aren't even ready, are they? Yeah, two of them aren't even finished yet or renovated yet. So in a so, pandemic, with two of them still under renovation. Yeah. You just made six thousand pound last, last month. month, like in August. Last yeah, month, which is just incredible. Um, so you must be pinching yourself. Yeah, I mean it's still crazy. It's been such a roller coaster as well, and especially when I first bought it, bid at auction, and then a week later the pandemic hit, and I was like, oh god, what have I done? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but I just spoke with my management agent. Um, everything about the property they said was just perfect. It worked really well. And so I just had to trust the process, go with it. And yeah, yeah it's paying off. So. And you're like the, you, you, I've seen you trolling the trolls on YouTube. Yeah. Talk to me about that because it's so, so right. I just find it so funny because obviously they have a go at you for like the, for the course and how much it costs, etc. But I'm, I, I've just, I just learned so much off a free course that has completely changed my life. So um, yeah, if I see them say something, I'm just, Jumping they're just up. making excuses and jealous and bitter because yeah, it can happen. Yeah, so. and that's not the only project you've done. You've got you've got the block of ten flats, but you've also. So, um, I mean, what, what, did you get the block? You've got the block of flats just now. The crash course was almost a year ago. Yeah. So talk to me about your first. I want to the f very first property you I bought, did. and I also want to know how you found it, how you chose the area. I want the facts. I want you to all okay. everything you learned from the crash course you implemented. I now want the yeah. not the recycled version, but the tried, tested, got the t-shirt. Yeah now what you've done yeah. with it. So talk to me about, leave the crash course, well, 
What's the very first thing that you did? Well, the first thing I did, well, I just obviously lost my job. So I needed to try and get mortgage in principle as well. But okay. then I remember what you said at the course. It's like, if you're going to buy an actual, a cash flow producing asset, you, you don't need to have a full-time income yourself. You know, Correct. It's, it's based off the, the asset itself. So um, I spent the first couple of months just talking to mortgage brokers. I think I got laughed out of all the banks at the start. And then there's, but if you've got a good opportunity, you can always find a lender. Yeah. Um, so yeah, got my mortgage in principle and then I went, I just, I booked about 40 viewings in one week in Liverpool and Nottingham. I just went all over um, and I was just looking for what places are going to potentially grow the next. And I think I chose on Liverpool. Um, yeah, I just went through the crash course booklet, obviously all of the, all of the numbers, the ROI, um, uh, open rent. Obviously I made sure I checked what kind of the local houses next door uh, we're renting out for and just put it all into the spreadsheet everything that i learned on the course uh, and i just trusted the maths basically yeah. and that's that's all i did i just made sure it worked so you bought um, so, okay so you so so and at the crash course because we yeah. actually do it at the crash course don't we well yeah this is the thing so i so i've been investing kind of in in stocks and dividend payments for about eight nine years but they pay like three four five percent really low cash flow and then i remember being at the course and after about three hours when you calculate at the course you can actually make you know 20 25 percent roi on your money back i was like okay well if i just go home sell my stocks and put it all into property i can five times my cash flow and i'll be financially free within a year yeah. so i got super excited went up to liverpool and i just yeah i just I, i've averaged out about 17 percent roi over the two she's two very, houses that i bought she's very very good and yeah. you know, i mean the title of this video by the way should be why I sold my stocks and invested in property instead. Yeah. Talk to me about the difference between property and stocks, and you've done both now. Yeah. Talk to me about the difference. I mean, I think stocks is definitely kind of the, the, the lazy way. It's a hassle-free, but you, you don't get the same income. You don't get the same capital growth. Um, and you don't, I mean, at the end of the day, you're at the mercy of the stock market. Yeah. Whereas, you know, I'm at the mercy of, if, if I want to hold on to my house, I don't have to sell, it's not going to go down. Um, I think you just have so much more control on owning the property yourself. Yeah. And then you can be so much more um, flexible with the financing on it as well. Oh, yeah. And I think that's the biggest thing that I've learned is how is raising finance, as long as you've got a good opportunity, like you can do so many different things with it. Like the, the Blackpool flats, I potentially could have actually bought that entire block for 175,000, that's 6,000 pounds a month income, all for free, because I bought it on a bridging loan at, at such a low discount when I refinance it the higher amount at what it's worth i'm basically pulling out all my money on a mortgage and then i wouldn't have literally put up I, I would have just got all my money back out so it's just bizarre the fact that yeah, know, yeah i just still can't believe like a year's gone by and i'm, I'm making like six seven thousand pounds a month just yeah <laughs> literally i just went in and just did it I just, yeah so yeah. so um talk to me about that first liverpool property then yeah like how did you find it what did you say to the agents like what happened uh, I just, you know, I just tried to book in as many viewings as possible, and just, I just, because I'd, I'd never done a viewing before either. Yeah. And um, but I was so excited and desperate to just buy somewhere. I, um, I just went to all the local estate agents in them. Um, found out, spoke with them, found out what they thought were the best postcodes. I spoke with a lot of the different taxi drivers as, as well, and yeah. they're like, "Don't go down that road." Um, there was a house I thought about buying at one point as well, but then I spoke with the next door neighbour and they were like, oh no, there's loads of gangs around here, I wouldn't do it. Where, where was that in Liverpool? Oh, it, was, it was L4, it was Anfield somewhere. I can't okay, remember yeah. Because yeah. I think that's really important as well. Sometimes people say to me, yeah. they say, where's the best investment area? And for me, it's like, I can't give you a city because yeah. even in Liverpool, you've, you've got two properties right in Liverpool. Yeah, yeah, in. It, it, it depends on where you are. I can say yeah. Liverpool is great, but one street could be awesome. A quarter of a mile down the road, another street could be could be really good. Could be, so you've got to do yeah. so much due diligence. So what due diligence did you do before you started investing in Liverpool? Because you're not from Liverpool, are you? No, no, no. I'm from uh, South East London. Kind right. Of like so, so in terms of like crime rates, what yeah. the agents are saying, rentability. We talk at the crash course yeah. about, do you remember the, the risks? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I remember doing that. Right. So how did you, how did you risk it? With a stock, you're not going to, you're not going to yeah. buy a stock and then end up, having, oh, that's a nightmare stock. Whereas with a property, yeah. that can happen. So how yeah. did you de-risk it? And how did you make sure that you weren't buying an absolute dud in a terrible area? Oh, that's a good question. Um, the, I mean, I probably just looked at, the main thing I was looking at was open rent and just really, probably I'd say most of the, 
um, due diligence I did was probably more on the ground, actually talking to the local estate agents, what the rental demands were for the local areas. Because yeah. at the end of the day, if I'm going to buy a house, the most important thing is that it rents out well. Yeah. So I went around and I just spoke with um, as many of the estate agents as possible. Obviously, spareroom.com, make sure you see there's high demand in that area as well. Um, just mouse click check, obviously, the house prices. You can kind of see as well that everything follows like London, Birmingham, Manchester, yeah. Liverpool, and then Burnley, hopefully next Blackpool as well. But um, yeah, there's just so many articles and I bet so many other investors as well that have bought most, in Liverpool. Most people when they buy though, I find they just go with their feelings, with their gut. And yeah. oh, do I like the area? How does it feel? But actually, this is a, this is a process, <laughs> a bit, isn't it? Yeah. You've, got to, you've got to check the right website, speak to the right agents, ask the right questions. Um, so the first house in Liverpool, you bought it for how much? Uh, Ninety thousand. Okay. Way, yeah. And what was what? Did you get a discount? Was that the asking uh, price? I got it. It was. I got it five grand under the asking price, but it was also ten thousand pounds under what the person bought it for two years ago. Okay. And that was because they were having a divorce. So yeah. technically made ten thousand pounds in just buying it. Yeah. Um, and you're renting that out for five ninety. Five ninety. Mortgage um, payments? Mortgage about one fifty. So you're making a few hundred quid a month? Making about three five five on it. Yeah. And um, if you add that up over the year, you're talking just shy of four thousand pounds. Yeah. How much did you put down as a deposit? It's about I think it was about twenty five thousand. It was something around that amount. It was twenty five percent. Um but overall it was seventeen percent ROI is what I've got in the, That's in the good. spreadsheet, which And I I always say if it's less yeah. than fifteen, don't buy it. Yeah. 20% is the target. Well, I aimed for 20 as well, but then there was always little things that kept coming yeah. up which I didn't plan for and renovated yeah. or a new boiler or a new sensor or something. So, was... How, what, Who are the tenants? How's that going? Uh, yeah, tenants really good. One's a surveyor. Um, yeah, no problems at all. Um, yeah. The other tenant I've got, she's got a guarantee, guarantor, sorry. Yeah. Um, she's, actually, she's actually on housing benefit as well, but she's a lovely lady. She's got kids, just got a really good feeling. Um, and yeah, no, actually, no, no at problems moment, at all. Though, so. At the moment, if she's on housing benefits, it's probably a good thing because the rent is a bit more guaranteed. Yeah. If the, if the council are paying it, than, yeah. Than if than if she was than if she was working arguably. Well, this is what I thought about my um about the flats in Blackpool as well. Just, I, I calculated obviously what I could get on SA, but even at that price, even if I just rent them out to like the local council or, or put or help the homeless, like you'd still cover any mortgage payment on yeah. one hundred seventy five thousand yeah. pounds for ten flats. It is... must have been nerve wracking there buying it from auction. Oh, I was, yeah. I mean, scared. Do, do, you, do you do you get nervous? Are you a nervous investor? Are you confident? Not normally. I'm probably more nervous. You're you nervous about coming here. <laughs> I'm nervous about coming here. Yeah. But you've you, you've been in the Amazon jungle. But yeah, yeah. I lived in like the Amazon jungle and been around jaguars and anacondas and stuff. Doesn't scare me at all. But put me on camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but sometimes yeah. I have to drag people sometimes to come on the show because. Mm. It, but I always I always teach you who make the crash course. If you're not uncomfortable, Ooh. you're not growing. Yeah. So get comfortable getting uncomfortable. Um, but like, ha what, what happened at the auction? Did you physically go? No, it was all, all online yeah. as well. But I was bouncing back and forth. Um, uh, it was, uh, I think it was Patterson's I was using. Yeah. Um, but oh, it was just, yeah, it was just so nerve wracking. I mean, as soon as I did it, um, I just, I, yeah. I don't really know what to say. I, when, when they said that you were the highest bidder, you won. Did you feel sick? Did you feel I happy? felt sick. I, yeah. I generally felt like, what the hell have I done? Why have yeah. I done? Because I, I, I originally I went up there to not even spend any money. I was just going to try and maybe find like a rent to rent and network <laughs> around. And I came back home and I was like talking to my dad. And I was like, dad, I've just bought 10 flats. That's crazy. <laughs> um, and you hooked so, up with one of our academy members. Well, I, I, I went up there and I just tried to network and I tried to find out who was selling deals up there. And there was a lady called uh, Becky Butler, who yeah. I think was one of your Academy members as well. She, she's been on Winners Wednesday. She has, yeah. She's making she has. 10 grand a month from her service to combination yeah. problems in Blackpool as well. It's true, yeah. So you can tell me for um, what happened. Uh, so yeah, I've got rent to rent that I've got of her as well. Great. Um, so that's going well. I mean, been a bit hit hard by the pandemic. Sure. Um, but it was just through meeting her, she introduced me to my new management agent, who's called Lisa Holmes, who runs the uh, Blackpool Accommodation uh, Facebook page. So right. make sure you follow yeah, that. Yeah, I'll check that out. I'll leave a link. Um, and yeah, they, they've been great. So it's just, just through networking and it's a small world when you get into property as yeah. well. And everyone's just so lovely as well. Yeah. Like, well. One thing I found is I always thought, oh, a lot of people in property, they'll be too busy. They won't want to help. Like, but yeah, they yeah. <laughs> they generally really want to help. But you just ask, yeah, anyone will meet you for a coffee pretty much. It's an industry. I found property is an industry where everybody wants everybody to win, generally speaking. Not always. 
Mm. Sometimes human nature is, is wanting people to yeah. lose because they feel that they're going to win by you losing. But I mean, I'm certainly trying to break that. I know certainly in my world, in property, yeah. the whole mantra is your success is our success and it's about helping people. So I'm really glad to hear that Academy members help, yeah. helped you out with what you're doing, Becky, and that's a shout out to her. What have been the biggest lessons then from the whole, over the year, and it's been like a roller coaster. It's been crazy. What have yeah. been the biggest lessons? I think it's just figuring out that there's always a way. As long as the opportunity is good, there's always a way to make it happen. You can always find, you know, you always be able to find a lender. You're, you'll always be able to do something with that property. Yeah. Um, and I, I think it's just making sure you trust in the numbers as well and just yeah. doing your due diligence and just trying to take into account everything that could go wrong. This is a people business and a numbers yeah. business. So I think if you need to be able to talk to people, negotiate, but also crunch the numbers. Yeah. I think that's vitally important. I think, yeah, definitely trusting your gut. I mean, I went up there and I, I just made friends with um, a lot of the estate agents and my yeah. management agency, and I got them to actually come to the viewings, my right. management agents come to the viewing with me. And they said that they, they've you know worked in the area for got 10 years or so. And they were like, this, this street is perfect for the tourism. Yeah. It will rent out really well. Spoke with the next door neighbors of the hotel as well. And they were like, yeah, it's perfect. It sells out every year. Um, and that was all I really needed because I, Put it, put it in the calculator in the spreadsheet, and I was just convinced that it would work. And yeah. here we are. So, are you planning on going back to stocks as an investment? No, no, definitely not. <laughs> Every, stick, yeah. stick to property. Property. All, all I want to do now is buy, refurb, and refinance. Yes. Because if I can get a good finance package, um, I would have technically just bought this whole block of ten flats for free, which mm. I just find crazy. So, I liked what you said as well about how the lenders. Uh, I mean, I, I see this at the crash course, but. If the house is good, yeah. if it's a good investment, you're gonna get lending on it. Because yeah. sometimes people worry, they say things like, I can't get lending, I can't get, it's like, yeah. it's not about you. Yeah, it's... it's about the investments that you can find. If you learn to find good deals, everything else will follow. Yeah. Do you believe that? 100%. I mean, I, I spoke to probably about 10 different brokers as well at the start, and half of them all said just no, like there's no chance you can't do this. Yeah. And then, you know, fast forward six months later, they're emailing me being like, oh, who did you use by the way? Who who was your lender and yeah they're so interested right? yeah because you didn't have a job yeah it was crazy how did you um, get to the position where you didn't have a job just because thomas cook went under okay so yeah so you lost your so, job they yeah. went bust and you thought forget this i'm but i bet now yeah. you're making more money than you were at thomas cook oh 100 percent, a lot more and and it was i just remember being at the crash course um uh and as, as soon as i realized the roi that you could get I, I pretty much wanted to leave after three hours. I was like, I don't need to stay here. I just need to go and just get this done. Yeah. Um, which is why I'm so kind of passionate about the course and everything I learned there as well. I really so. appreciate that. What would you say to someone that was that was considering going? Maybe they've seen some of the bad reviews. Maybe they've seen yeah. some of the, the, the negheads on, on YouTube comments. Yeah. What would your advice be? Just go in the crash course. You have to go to it. Like, you, you can't, I can't explain how much value you get from that. Um, it's easily worth more than the £30,000 that you can ever spend at uni or... Yeah. Just, uh, and even like just the book Rich Dad Poor Dad, learning about cash flow opportunities. Like ninety nine percent of the population don't know anything about investing for cash flow or passive income, and you learn that straight away on the course. Yeah, I really and, appreciate that, yeah. and I think that I mean I put the crash course out there for free as well. Yeah, and you, you can you can I think you can get it right now online um, on Samuel three six five, and you can access that for a pound yeah. online right there on the crash course, and then maybe even get the results that you've got. So yeah. what's next for you? Just, uh, well, refinance this and then just buy, refurb, refinance. Scale up, baby. keep flipping and keep growing. Yeah. See, see how big we can make it. And I want a castle as well. You've got a castle, so I've got to <laughs> yeah. get a bigger one I'm than sure you'll get there. Lawrence, I appreciate you sharing your story. It's massively yes. inspirational. Thanks for the yeah. shout out about the crash course and look forward to helping you get to new heights. Great stuff, I hope so. Respect, man. Great stuff, thank you. I hope you enjoyed the interview. Now listen, listen, listen. You can either have excuses right now or you can have results like Lawrence got. I'm gonna give you an invitation to go through the Property Investors Crash Course. The exact thing that Lawrence did, now he's financially free from one deal. Those flats, he's financially free. He's got multiple deals, he's got rent to rents, he's got properties in Liverpool. Forget him, forget me, this is about you. Are you gonna make an excuse or are you gonna get results? I'm gonna give you an invitation to join the Property Investors Crash Course for a pound. Pay one pound, do the crash course through Samuel365. Become a member, do the crash course, one pound, and get results. Most people watching this are gonna come up with an excuse. Not right now, I'm not sure. I left my card in the living room. Don't make an excuse, make results. I'll leave a link in the description. 
Get clicked on right now. And I look forward to seeing you on Winners Wednesday real soon one day too. Peace out. Click the link. See you there.